Hello, my wonderful weasels. Welcome back to the Game Cave. My name is Weasel Bandit, and today I will be making a little bit of a different video than usual, but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Today I'll be showing you 10 Easter eggs or hidden stuff or secrets or whatever you want to call it from Fallout 4. Given that I enjoy the game so much, I was curious about the kind of things that Bethesda had hidden inside of, of the game, and well, they are kind of famous for hiding stuff inside their game, so I looked into it a little bit and I liked it so much that I wanted to share the experience with my weasels. Number one. The first one is something that I have completely missed all the times I have played through the game. It has to do with Deacon, or Deacon, 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 we'll call him Deacon, from the railroad. This guy, this guy right here, yeah, remember, remember him? You. You find the railroad, you talk to Desdemonda, this guy comes out of nowhere and defends your honor like you're some kind of damsel in distress and he's the knight in the, in the shining white um, soiled t-shirt. Yeah. Didn't you, didn't you think that it was kind of weird that he defended you like that, even though he's never even met you? Well, it turns out he has. Well, maybe he hasn't met you directly, but he's always been around and he has always been watching you. Have you noticed the plain-clothed Waldo hiding in the Commonwealth? No? Well, that could be because we are talking about the disguise expert. Or, well, someone who likes to dress up as different people at least. That? Not much of a disguise. A disguise is more than a wig and some lice-ridden clothes. Well, it turns out that that stylish hairdo of his is actually a wig, and in reality he's doing some kind of Bruce Willis impression, you see? With the baldness and the shade. Shades and... Oh, come on, I can't be the only one thinking that. Moving on. Now that we know what we're looking for, we can actually find Deacon all over the Commonwealth. Posing as a security guard in Diamond City, as a caravan worker at Bunker Hill, a drifter and good neighbor, sometimes just wandering around having a good time and other times having a snooze in the memory den. Other people say that you can also meet him as a completely random event all around the map. Now, some say that it's not really him and Bethesda was just being lazy, so they reused the same model for different NPCs, but it's actually quite the opposite. Try listening to what the different deacons have to say. Hi. What's up? What a day, huh? Sure love trading here. No, no, or trade stuff. Still Don't you have, like, important things to do? Wait, nothing more to say. What a day, huh? Everyone's welcome and good neighbor. Even me. Don't you have, like, important things to do? Nothing more to say. Excuse me. What's up? What a day, huh? Welcome to the, uh, Great Green Jewel. You'll totally love it here. Don't you have, like, important things to do? Nothing more to say. Hi. Hope you didn't mind the reception. When you tango with the Institute, you gotta be careful when someone new gets on the dance floor. That does sound like the same guy, right? And even if that wasn't enough, rarely have I heard more lame attempts at trying to sound casual-like, like you have a good excuse for being there. I haven't heard such awkward attempts of trying to sound casual since I was 8 years old and my parents came looking for me with a man whose car had just been hit with a bunch of mud balls while I was hiding my muddy hands behind my back. Yes. Well. Even if that hasn't convinced you, Bethesda has made it very clear that all of the NPCs really are Deacon. Because if you try to kill them, they all just fall down. They don't die, which means that they are all marked as essential. Now, come on Hancock, that's his private area. To further prove that this is really Deacon, if you decide to kill the railroad members in the end of the game and you kill Deacon, these NPCs will be gone the next time you travel to the places where they were previously. So there's really no doubt that all of those NPCs were really Deacon in disguise. But does that mean that he has been watching you? Couldn't it be that he was sent there on a mission by the railroad? Well, it's certainly a coincidence that he shows up everywhere you go, but that isn't really proof enough that he was watching you. Or me, or yeah, the person who is playing the protagonist. Except for the fact that if you go to this place, a little southwest of Walt 111 and Sanctuary, you find this place here. A little nice place to catch some sun, drink some water, and watch birds, right? Well, apparently birds aren't the only thing that can be watched from here. 
As you can see, there's a clear point of view for looking at Sanctuary and Wall 111. But does that mean that it's Deacon that's been sitting here watching? Yes, there is definite proof when you look at the white mark right here. That does resemble the mark of the railroad, doesn't it? It does. And it is proven without a doubt when you go to the railroad's hideout and see this. Clearly, someone has been watching you and marked you as an ally. That's the exact word that Deacon used to describe you when you first officially met. Numero dos. For the second one, I have chosen one which a lot of you have probably found. It can be found right here at Hubris Comics. When you first enter, you have to kill a couple of cool... Of cools? Yeah, you, you, yeah. you have to kill, kill a couple of cool... A couple of ghouls. <clears throat> yeah. And then you can unlock the case right by the cash register and get Grognak the Barbarian's Axe. It's a fun little item and it does reasonable damage and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good melee weapon, but the thing that I like most about it is that it really makes you look like a complete psychopath when you go around in a freshly pressed clean suit with a giant axe and just hacks away at stuff. As a little bonus that's worth mentioning, it's that uh, if you go to the top of the building, uh, along the way you will both find the Grognak the Barbarian's costume as well, but also at the very top floor you'll find the costume of the Silver Shroud. Silver Shroud is uh, sort of a crime-fighting superhero, normal hero, I don't know, yeah. Uh, he seems to be based on the Shadow and or the Green Hornet. And this costume is actually a quest item, which you can give to someone named uh, Kent Connolly in the memory den in Good Neighbor. But if you like to keep it, it does look pretty awesome, and it might even look even more psycho psychotic than the clean suit, depending on whether you'd rather meet an axe-wielding maniac in a trench coat or in a suit. Personally, I'd go for the trench coat. I think it, it, it'll make it easier to outrun him. Perhaps. Numero three. If you go just a little bit more south, just... No, not south. Why, had I, why have I written south? It's north. Yeah. If you go just a little bit more north, just past the Boston Common, you'll find the next one. And as the music suggests, you have landed at Prost Bar. Prost meaning cheers in German. And if you go inside, you'll see that the bar resembles the one in the hit 80s TV series Cheers. It's got all your favorite characters, including Cliff and Norm at their usual seats, but having lost a little weight. Especially Norm. Number fear. Something that has been in every Fallout game to date was, of course, inevitable to be found in Fallout 4 as well. Aliens. And just like in Fallout 3, you can find a crashed UFO. You might even get a chance to see it fall from the skies. You find it right here, just east of Opaland Station. When you get there, you can follow a green blood trail right to the cave where you actually get to meet the alien who crashed and evidently he soiled himself during the crash, judging from the way he walks. If you kill him, you can take the iconic alien blaster and the approximately 450 shots that he has on him. Go bang! Fenway Park plays a large role in Fallout 4 as Diamond City, so naturally Bethesda wanted to include one of the most prominent features of the stadium, the lone red seat, which signifies the longest home run ever hit at Fenway. It can be found by standing next to the kid from Avatar who tries to sell you water. Hey, I, I guess he has become a water vendor now. Shut up, that was funny. Nummer Schicht. If you've ever played a Fallout game before, chances are that you have seen the mysterious stranger. If you have that perk, of course. But what you may have missed is that our friend Nick Valentine, the detective, actually have a case file on him. Apparently he has been tracking him for quite a while. It's pretty cool to know that it isn't just the protagonists of the games who have seen him. In the case file, Valentine wonders if the mysterious stranger could be a ghoul with minimal scarring. I personally have a feeling, or a theory, that it could be the vault representative that you meet both before and after the bombs fell. Now, 
tell me those outfits don't look identical. And yes, I, I know that he doesn't have minimal scarring, but he could be wearing a, a mask, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Chi Hao. Fallout 4 has a number of movie references, but I've chosen only to focus on the one from the only movie I've actually seen. And yes, I know that I haven't seen Blade Runner or Jaws, and I really should have, but I haven't. Uh, there's a lot of movies that I should have seen that, I ne that I've never seen, like The Godfathers and Usual Suspects and well, the list goes on. Stop judging me! You can see here that a deceased janitor is lying underneath a blackboard. And I should mention that this uh, reference is from the movie Goodwill Hunting, which I have seen. But the deceased janitor is lying underneath a blackboard with the same equations that Matt Damon makes in the movie. It's pretty cool when you find stuff like this. and. It can be found in the CIT ruins, which is actually based on the real-world MIT building. Which makes sense that, that that could be a place where such equations would be written on blackboards. Numero sottavo. If you go to this location on the map, you will find an old pre-war submachine. This is something that I completely missed on my first playthrough, which is why I'm mentioning it here. It actually triggers a pretty funny event or quest, or pretty interesting quest, I'd rather say, when you reach it and get inside. And I won't spoil anything about what you find inside, you'll just have to go there and find out for yourself. Numero now, this isn't actually a secret place or an easter egg or anything, it's more like a, a funny place to go to. You can find it right here, on the map here, and when you go inside you'll find a small structure with the most basic things to survive. But then you'll see a balcony with some gas canisters lying on what looks to be a launch pad, and if you actually shoot the nozzle on the canisters you can make them fly away and explode. It's pretty funny to do that for a while. The last one I have chosen to include is actually more of a cheat than anything else. I've chosen to include it because it really helps when you just want to build a settlement and you don't want to have to go out and actually find all the materials needed because <sighs> there's no adhesive anywhere. Well, <clears throat> if you're on a PC, you can go into the console and then write the commands that give you the different materials you need. You Everyone knows that, but that can be quite tiresome to do that over and over again, each and every time you you need a specific type of materials. So the solution I found was that you can simply make a notepad file and then write all the commands for the materials you want in that. Save that as a text file or txt file and then save it in your Fallout folder. I have chosen to just call it one.txt. Then, when you're in the actual game, you don't even have to restart the game. When you're in there, you can simply open the console and write bat1, one, one being the name of the file. And then, as you can see, with only one command written in the game, you receive everything that you had written in the notepad file. I'll put the text for this one, this one I used here for my, uh, for my game here, in the, the description of the video, so that you can use it too if you want. This was some of the easter eggs and secrets that I enjoyed in the game. Did I leave some of your favorites out? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, please give it a like or let me know in the comments too. I'm thinking of making more of these videos and would love to hear if that's something that you guys would want to see. If so, let me know which game you'd like to see me do. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe because of course you being as clever and as handsome as you are, you have already subscribed a long time ago, right? Of course you have. Thanks for being at the Game Cave, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.